Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. We're here to talk about accounting cleanup. And as I said, folks, this, this topic is kind of open to some interpretation because, you know, that question, you know, the cleanup can, can be something that you can consider, you know, here in 22, or it could be something that you could consider, you know, as an option for 2023, and maybe a little bit of both in both of those years, depending on you know, where your books are, how things are, et cetera, okay? We're going to kind of focus initially on on um, 22 because that's kind of what, where we are. This is kind of pursuant or a follow-up to yesterday's webinar on the New Year Prep, Accounting New Year Prep webinar that I did yesterday. Um, but they kind of go hand in hand in that, you know, here we are. We're at a really good point in time in the year when maybe it is a good time for us to consider uh, you know, after having worked for 10 or 12, 11 or 12 months in our books that we look at trying to get stuff cleaned up to make things better, either for our end of year documents or for our, for next year's um, accounting usage as well, okay, or bookkeeping. Um, so the first thing that we want to talk about is our balance sheet. So, you know, basically do, does our balance sheet look good? Meaning are we okay and happy with that? And again, that can be done in either year. So we go to financial balance sheet and we're going to run it. I mean, technically it would, doesn't matter whether I run it for November or December. I've only got entries through, you know, November 17th in this case. So November is fine. Uh, we're going to go to our columns tab. We want to see account number, account name, and year to date balance. That's really what I'm most concerned with. And then we're going to go ahead and click print is where are we now in the year now? And so you know, it, it's a fund accounting system, folks. Every chart of accounts is different, okay? Some some churches have very simple charts of accounts, balance sheets, you know, maybe one or two assets with maybe a handful of funds. Other churches might have a dozen different assets with, you know, 30, 40, 50 different funds. It really varies from one institution or one church to the next, okay? Um, in addition to that, it also depends on how your chart of accounts is designed and constructed. Some churches may have a one-to-one -one ratio of assets to funds, meaning you know we've got our general checking account exclusively represents the activity in say our general operating fund. You know our savings account exclusively stores the money for say our building fund, etc. You know so I've got you know three assets, three funds. Assuming I have no outstanding liabilities, then I would expect those three assets and the funds to have the same balance at all times. Um, but in this case, for our particular chart of accounts, that is not the case, okay? Our particular, say, Huntington Bank checking account uh, maybe stores the balance of multiple different funds down here. And we do have some outstanding liabilities, notably tax liabilities, um, you know, monies that are deducted and withheld from payroll that are not yet paid here, say, for November. And we do also have some pass-through monies and a balance under accounts payable. But I still can look at my balance sheet here and know where my money is. So basically, I, you know, without getting out my calculator, I know that my $126,798.98 balance in my Huntington Bank checking does equal the undesignated funds 117089 plus my outstanding liabilities that equals that balance i can look here at my balance sheet and go okay my national bank national city cd of 629958 corresponds with my total cd fund balances down here at the bottom so you know this is basically what we're advising that you look at with regards to this is make sure that these accounts are reporting you know the with the totals that we're expecting or wanting now is a really good time to get that stuff sort of cleaned up before we then move into say 2023 and you know doesn't mean we still can't go back into the prior year and make the desired changes or clean up make the necessary cleanups that we you know clean up uh, processes that we need to get things fixed but why not work on that now you know you're preparing for you know, uh, you know, uh, Christmas and end of year processes and things like that, and opening up New Year's and opening up the New Year and and in uh, processing payroll reports and tax documents and things like that, and you can begin working on that here now with six weeks left 
in the rest of the year to begin looking in that and preparing for that rather than having to worry about it, you know, right when you've got a whole bunch of other stuff on your plate. So it doesn't hurt to begin looking at these things now, okay? Because, you know, again, my balances that I'm, in, I'm ending my year with in, say, 2022 are going to be the balances that I'm going to be bringing forward into the new year. They're right. Again, I can pretty much clean those up at any time, but why not look at it now? And again, this is going to kind of all tie back into some of these other things that we're going to be discussing here momentarily. So look at the balance sheet. I mean, again, one of the other things is look at your treasurer's report. We're going to come back to that momentarily. But And the second option here that we're talking about is our bank reconciliations. So look at your bank recs, okay? I don't really have many bank reconciliations in here. I've got a couple in here from earlier in the year. But folks, you can always and revisit the bank reconciliations, whether they're finalized or not, okay? Even though it may say finalized, yes, look at it, okay? Reprint, re -look and revisit them and look at them and look down and print the reports for two different reasons, and here's why. Okay, one, you want to make sure that the difference to reconcile is still zero. It's not here, folks. Don't. That's not what I'm looking at this for. So make sure that it's still showing a zero difference to reconcile. Did I choose the bank rec report? I think I did. Yes, I did. Um, bank rec report. Confirm it's still showing zero. The other thing that you'll want to do with regards to that is make sure that the adjusted bank balance and the balance per accounting are the same now as the reports that you printed when they were reconciled. Okay. You may have gone back in and cleaned something up by reversing some, you know, outstanding transactions that weren't impacting your overall difference to reconcile, but by reversing those entries, it would have changed your adjusted bank balance and your balance per accounting. May still show a zero difference to reconcile, but those adjusted bank balance and asset balance per accounting totals may be different. If you do, then maybe you want to reprint a new bank rec report, bank reconciliation report for each month and replace those with the ones that are now showing the current totals. I'm just sort of addressing um, potential audit questions that may come up. You know, if an auditor comes in and says, hey, let me see your bank reconciliation reports. They look at those reports. They come in here and look at this. They still see differences of a zero, but then they're seeing different balances in church windows, and they're going to go, well, wait, why are these balances different? So you want to try to have the data corresponding with what's displaying in the software, with what's on your reports, as much as humanly possible. And like I said, you want to go back in and make sure that they're still reporting as zero. Okay? Make sure that the difference still shows as zero. Okay? Some of you may even be not finalizing them until you do get to the end of the year. You know, so maybe you're going to go back in here and you're going to choose each one of them for a particular asset starting back in maybe January, working your way forward, verifying and printing the report, confirming it's zero, then finalizing. I do work with folks who leave their bank recs unfinalized until they're getting to the end of the year, at which point they go back in, they print their final reports, they finalize them, okay? Literally 12 months in a row, or 11 months in this case, where we are in November. So again, look at your bank recs. Make sure that they're reporting as they should, okay? Um, going back again, option number three here that we're talking about is on your balance sheet is about accounts payable vendors. So is your accounts payable vendor account right here under our liabilities? I don't have a highlighter, folks, but you'll see now down here, we'll see under current liabilities, the italicized accounts payable shows a $10 balance, okay? When that bills and payments are entered properly, that accounts payable ledger balance will be zero, okay? Um, Mine isn't. It's got a balance. I've got to investigate that, okay? So it could be positive balance. It could be negative balance. But accounts payable, we're going to enter a bill for a vendor. We're going to turn around and pay that. It's net effect on the vendor or vendors should be zero. Okay, now the exception to that may be if I'm entering a bill, say, to affect my treasurer's report in December of 2022 that I'm not going to then pay until January of 23. That might be the exception, okay, where maybe having a balance under accounts payable would be acceptable and, uh, and expected, frankly, and, but it would be explainable, okay. Um, also, you know, like right here, I'm speaking of current liabilities under accounts payable, notice we've got some pass-through accounts as well. We've got crop walk, disaster relief recovery, maybe the church had, had, had raised some funds for, say, 
Hurricane Ian relief. And so we had gathered those monies. And, you know, if, if, you know, maybe it's time to write that check, you know, maybe we need to write that check and send that off to American Red Cross or wherever it's going in terms of that. Okay. So if you're handling pass throughs and liabilities, you know, maybe look at those and say, hey, do we want to keep these? If I don't write these checks for this, these balances are going to just carry forward into 2023. So there's no hurry to do that. But again, it's all just part of the process of ensuring that we're managing the church's money correctly. Okay. in the way we want to. Okay. Um, okay. And we're going to come back to that accounts payable vendor balance here momentarily. Okay. Four, number four on our list here is under, and this is one we kind of talked to about yesterday a little bit in the uh, New Year prep uh, webinar on accounting yesterday, was going into pay bills, quick pay, and view outstanding bills. And honestly, folks, view vendors with a balance. And we're going to spend a couple minutes on both of these. So right here, I've got two outstanding bills, one from 21 and one from 22, okay? Um, this is what the document handout really sort of points to, folks, is what it's here to help you deal with, is the outstanding bills listed document talks about specifically items that are in here that you may not know or understand or may have questions about, and it details how to address these, okay? So first and foremost, we see here on December 15th of 21, AEP, American Electric Power, a power company has a bill amount due of 65308 but an account balance of zero. The account balance of zero with, with virtually entire certainty, I can guarantee that that bill was paid, okay? Why? Because the account balance is zero. If the balance were 65308 or something different, then it might be something else, okay? Uh, <clears throat> but if they're, because the account balance is zero, I'm almost quite sure that that bill was paid. How do we fix that? Well, we go back into, and we're going to go back, and this is again covered in that document, folks. We're going to go back to 21. So we're going to go back to 21. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to have go up and find, go up to transactions and browse. We're going to have the software do some work for us. Here we are at browse donation transaction browser options. We're going to uncheck all of our transactions, checking just bills and unchecking show paid and click OK. And there is our $653.08 bill. Okay, so it was issued on December 15th of 21. We're going to correct that. And it opens up our correct bill transaction. We notice right here it says the bill has not been marked as paid. So we're going to click mark as paid. And we're going to scroll down to December of 21. And sure enough, I've got a payment here on December 15th for 653.08. So simply the bill somehow got unchecked or wasn't checked when I recorded the payment, leaving the bill outstanding. I highlight that, click OK, and save corrections. It then confirms that the corrections were saved. Notice it now removes my bill from the list because it no longer is an outstanding bill. So now when I come back into say 2022, and I go back to pay bills, quick pay, and view outstanding bills, that bill for AEP is gone. I have done nothing, folks, to change account balances. There's no beginning balances I need to update regarding that. I have literally just tied the bill and the payment back together to clear this invoice from the list of outstanding bills. Okay? A lot of folks ask that question. Well, aren't I changing balances? No, you're not. You're just tying the bill and the payment together. That's it. Okay, so now we've got our bill from January of, of 22, where it shows, be, you know, for be sure you're covered insurance, where it shows the amount due of 36.24, but the account balance is 10 bucks. So that's a little bit of a different problem. Okay, I want to go in now and look at my my vendor for that. So we're going to go back up to transactions and browse, and we're going to go right here to <clears throat> my account. And I'm going to find my be sure you're a covered insurance vendor. And I'm going to even go so far as to enter, say, January of 2022 as my date occurred. And I click OK. And here's my bill and my payment. So this is my outstanding bill. And if we notice here, we clearly see that the bill was entered for $3,624.80 and the payment was posted for $3,614.
Well, there's my $10 discrepancy. I guess the bottom line I'm trying to kind of point you to folks here is you don't want to speculate as to what the nature of the issue is. It could have been a beginning balance problem. It could have been a handful of things that were a problem with it. But you've got to go in and dive in and look at these and forensically investigate the problem to try to find out what it is. This is a very simple one, okay? I need to determine, did my check clear for 361480 or did I write it for the wrong amount? Well, logic says that if I cleared the bank for 361480 that I need to correct the bill and change my amount. So we're going to do that. So we're going to make that 361480. Come on, Josh. There we go. 80 and save corrections. It'll reverse and re-enter the new bill. And we now notice down at the bottom our debits and credits for January balance. The debit, the payment, and the bill match the same amount. Now when I go back to pay bills, quick pay, and view outstanding bills. Um, oh, I still got to mark the bill as paid. Oh, that was my fault. Oversight on my part. So the bill also needs to be marked as paid as well. So we need to go back in there. But it's the kind of proverbial kill two birds with one stone. So here's my bill. Highlight that, click correct, mark as paid, tie it back to my January 22 payment, click OK, and save corrections. Corrections have been saved. OK, so now I go back to pay bills, quick pay, and uh, view vendors, outstanding bills, and there's nothing there. So I've dealt with that, OK? View vendors with a balance. You may have vendors in here with balances that need to be dealt with. But you have to look at this, okay? These aren't bills. These are monies where they're put into these accounts through methods other than through bills. Maybe there are credits from payroll for payroll taxes or payroll deductions or pass-through monies that come over from donations. These are just vendors with a balance, okay? Maybe I am re ready to write my check for crop walk. I click on that, click Create Payments enter my payments for $715, print a check, and I send it off to them, okay? But they all have to be investigated, okay? Here we go. So we're running out of time here, folks. I'm going to delete that entire batch. Look at your treasurer's report. Again, just be aware. So if I look at it for November, I'm going to go to my columns, account number, account name, period activity. Uh, I'm really more worried about my year-to-date balance maybe not quite, so my year-to-date balance, maybe my previous year I don't, my year-to-date uh, balance budget and annual budget, I click print. This is going to tell me where I stand for the year, where, you know, in this case with November, regarding my treasurer's report, okay? We have to tell you this because we hear about it through support all the time, is folks don't look at their reports, okay? Church Windows doesn't know what's right or wrong. You have to know what's right or wrong, okay? And if you don't, then you have to find out what it is. Finally, with about, a, well, we're at 20 minutes after, folks, we're going to run a little long here, is cleaning up the chart of accounts, one of the most commonly overlooked uh, functions or steps that's performed in the software is deleting or removing accounts, folks. It's that simple. Up here under special functions, manage years, we've got an option down here at the bottom called delete unused accounts. This will show me a list, or you, a list of any account that even on November 17th of 2022 are eligible for deletion. It'll show you the type of an account it is, the account name, when it was last used, if the software recalls that, and the type, and you can literally go down the list and um, delete those accounts. I'll swoop literally checking the delete box and clicking delete selected accounts. There are no accounts, folks, in here where the audit trail in 22, there's anything in the audit trail in 2022 that you have to worry about, okay? If you delete an account that you should not have deleted, you can simply add it back to the chart of accounts. But I deleting accounts in 22 or 23 will not delete those same accounts in other accounting years. It's why the end of year procedure, the end of year procedure separates each year's chart of accounts from the others. So again, deleting accounts in say 23 does not remove those same accounts in any other accounting year. On that, finally on that, I want to point out that here, if we go back to our uh, home page, I'm going to wrap things up here, folks, real quick, I promise. Um, if we go up to Church Windows and Resource Center, I just want to show you, you can find more on deleting accounts here. 
is if you go to the resource center, there should be a video and a document on delete. Uh, it should be deleting here. Manage year, yeah, advanced manage years right here. Delete unused accounts right down at the very bottom. So it's under advanced uh, manage years. But you can find out that in detail about cleaning up your chart of accounts. Lots of information here, folks. Okay, we've gone a couple minutes long. I'm going to end my topic uh, for the day there.